because yeah. I like doing it. You have one on Parks and Rec that I'm excited about. Uh, See, but I won't spoil it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> See, I was going to do my Parks and Rec one next. <clears throat> Uh, but then, uh, you know, Mike, Michael Schur did The Good Place and Parks and Rec, mm -hmm. and I didn't want to dunk on him twice in a row because they have this, like, one-sided beef with each other <laughs> that I just don't want to happen. He's like, there's this one channel just dedicated to dunking on my work. It's kind yeah. of... <laughs> <laughs> then I'll do, the, very I'll, specific. I'll do the office right after that one. Too. It's time for me to talk about Parks and Rec. I was just telling you that it's illegal to say, I want to kill the President of the United States of America. Parks and Recreation, more commonly known as Parks and Rec, is a satirical, political, American mockumentary series created by Greg Daniels and Michael Schur. The series stars Amy Poehler as Leslie Nope, a hard-working, passionate, and occasionally ditzy bureaucrat from the fictional small town of Pawnee, Indiana. Its earliest stages received the most backlash, some critics and focus groups calling it a carbon copy of The Office, and others calling it predictable and slow-paced, leaving many people skeptical about the show's chances of success. Nevertheless, it obviously succeeded, and in its six-year runtime between 2009 and 2015, it changed. And aged. A lot. Let's get into it. What kind of garbage is that? Oops, my anarchy symbol. I'm going to do this video a little bit backwards. If you haven't already guessed by the title, I'm going to express my opinion first and then talk about why I think this, not the other way around like I usually do. I'm making an argument here. I'll be dividing up my main talking points into individual parts and bring them all together at the end. I don't have any statistics or data to use. I wouldn't even know where to begin if I wanted them, but that doesn't mean this video isn't well-researched. Even though they don't talk about politics often, which is something I'll talk about in a second, Parks and Rec is undoubtedly a political show, so I'm going to be, well, political. I'm going at this from different angles, so feel free to watch until the end of the video if you want to hear something other than my own opinion. Okay, now we can get into it. Yeah. It's showtime. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I'm Leslie Monster, and this is Nightline. So, politics, right? You've probably heard of them before. Parks and Rec is full of them. I mean, it's a show about the government. How could it not be? Our protagonist, Leslie Nope, who eventually becomes a member of the city council, is a highly political character who proudly and frequently states her political beliefs. The writers were actually really brave for talking about these super radical ideas far ahead of its time. Like, women should be in politics. Joe Biden is hot? So, two things. One, I don't think this necessarily makes Leslie Nope a bad or unlovable character, but I do think the almost immediate flanderization of your main character, who also happens to be a woman in politics, in a political show, is kind of... weak? Like, you can really summarize Leslie Nope into three things. She loves waffles, she loves binders, and she loves politics. Two, I think the active simplicity of her character is intentional. It's a facade of wokeness. We can have a strong, passionate, politically-minded character, but any actual political talk might drive audiences away. This was actually something that Schur and Daniels were worried about when getting feedback from focus groups. Like I alluded to before, it's not really a hot take to say that women should be in politics. I mean, it was in the 1800s. In fact, it's even more of a hot take now to romanticize the Clinton era, thus aging poorly. There's this one scene where Leslie is running for city council and she's listing all of her political ideas, but they're all pretty vague or just generally comedic. I'm pro parks, pro public safety, and I'm pro clean water. I'm also pro environmental regulation, and I'm very, very pro local propositions 45, 86, and 102F. But most of all, I'm pro Pawnee. Ironically, despite the show's attempt at disguising itself as left-leaning, most of the real political commentary is actually conservative, and it comes from the show's breakout character, Ron Swanson. Behold! The Swanson Pyramid of Greatness. Although Ron Swanson is a self-proclaimed libertarian, I like to call libertarians Republicans who want to smoke weed. Should someone have to have a government-issued license to drive a car? Hell no! What's next? Requiring a license to make toast in your own damn toaster? 
personal bias and joking aside, Ron Swanson is to conservatives as the Joker is to gamers. He is what they think they are. He's strong-willed, stoic, independent, simple, and masculine. He doesn't let people boss him around, and he's often the person giving Leslie advice. Libertarianism, as it is simply defined, upholds the idea of liberty at its core principles. They seek to maximize personal freedom and minimize anyone else's involvement. And although these ideas aren't deliberately right or left, libertarian talking points began to appear in conservative spaces in the mid-20th century, hence my earlier joke. You know, I'd like to see some competency exhibited by people before they drive. Let me be clear. Libertarianism has a different connotation here in the States than it does in places like France and Mexico. We often look at it as a sliding scale. Socialist and anarcho-libertarians believe in maximizing personal freedoms by decentralizing political structures and emphasizing worker self-management, while conservative libertarians believe that the communists are trying to make Mr. Potato Head transgender. In other words, Everyone likes freedom, but everyone thinks of freedom in a different way, resulting in different interpretations of Ron Swanson. While what supposed side of libertarianism Swanson is on may vary by episode, it's no doubt that he's written like a conservative archetype. Ron Swanson may not be anything like the show's target audience, but he very well could be representative of the audience's conservative father, or uncle, or grandfather. In some episodes, he's a centrist libertarian, in others, He's just a statist. History began on July 4th, 1776. Everything before that was a mistake. However, all of this really boils down to his personality and demeanor. And the things that he says that are conservative aren't immediately obvious to the more liberal-leaning target audience, thus entering Republican spaces as some sort of mascot. This aged the show poorly for a couple of reasons. One, despite being such a staple of liberal culture in the 2010s, this show managed to spout more conservative viewpoints than liberal ones. And two, Nick Offerman has complicated feelings regarding his most iconic role. He told The Guardian, quote, People want to conflate me with Ron Swanson's politics. He's a staunch libertarian and I'm interested in everyone having health care or being paid a living wage. When I used to look at social media more closely, there would be angry fans saying, I brought my shotgun to your comedy show and it turns out you're a total snowflake. End quote. Moving on. I want to bring up my main motivation for this video. Okay, so if you haven't actually seen Parks and Rec, this is probably really confusing. But basically, there's this recurring joke that Leslie Nope has a huge crush on Joe Biden. Like, you know, the current president and former vice president of the United States. And does anything age well when you're president or even a famous politician? Regardless, it's sort of weirdly surreal seeing him there on screen like that. I can't really put my finger on it, though. To me, it feels like watching old SNL skits featuring Donald Trump, knowing what he's done, knowing what he will do. Of course you can't compare the two, but the feeling is still there. Where are we? What year is it? Has anything really changed? I wanted to make this video not to dunk on Parks and Rec, but really show how quickly politics, culture, and media has changed. It's been five years since the series ended, and in those years we've seen… a lot. And because of that, there's been a newfound resurgence of leftist ideas, and more relevantly, critiques of liberal and centrist politics. Leftism in the states isn't new, but the ways that we've been radicalized certainly are. It would be easy for me to say, this show sucks, it aged like dog shit, but at least one of those things isn't true. Parks and Rec is a good show, but like all of us, it is the victim of time. In retrospect, the Hillary Clinton thing is still weird. The Joe Biden thing is still weird. The John McCain thing is still weird. But is that just not us cringing about ourselves? The way we thought? The way we idolize liberal centrism? When I was doing research for this video, I came across this quote from Nicole Hemmer's article in US News. Quote, Parks and Rec never lost the Obama-like belief in government powered by goodwill and consensus, but the obstructionism of the Obama years made this vision seem fantastical, stoking a desire for hard-headed partisans who would get things done. 
Parks and Rec embodied a brilliant, confident liberalism. It was a wish fulfillment for the age of Obama, who more than a decade later is still defined by the 2004 speech in which he posed the question, do we participate in a politics of cynicism or do we participate in a politics of hope? End quote. And that quote is exactly right, even today. Parks and Rec was a show that people needed, especially in the end. Defined by our last remaining hope in politics, Parks and Rec was a cultural zeitgeist for the Obama era. But is that something that we can still feel anymore? <laughs>